Well, welcome back to the channel, friends, patriots, and newcomers. If you're just seeing this channel for the first time, my name is David Waldrop, and I am sitting right here on the 1984 Rebel Outpost in my spaceship. If you know what that name means or you can figure it out, leave me a comment below. But it's basically my property that I built and secured for whatever may come. Everyone wondered how the world ended. We got hit. Does the sun America's just been attacked. Go on shining. And that's what this video is actually about. A storm is coming. And I have a feeling that you can feel it deep in your bones. Now, that's actually a song lyric. The other day, I was driving my truck, and I listened to a song, a country song going down the road by Warren Ziders, and it said, a storm is coming, I can feel it in my bones. And I ain't running, I've been running for way too long. That's kind of where we are right now in the world, right? Like we've been on our heels, we've been down, we've been out, we have not felt good, we've been sharing these things with people in our world. Hey, this stuff is not good. These key points or statistics are not looking good. What are we gonna do about it? And all of a sudden you get a little breath of fresh air and you see some hope. But it's interesting. It still feels like the country song. I can feel it in my bones that something is coming and that, com that something that's coming is a storm. And what am I talking about? What kind of storm am I talking about might be headed our way? Well, think about it for a second. You have lots of talk about wars and nuclear war. You have talk on all these channels about civil unrest and God forbid civil war. You have talk about EMP and attacks from other nations. It could be any of those things. It could be a man-made sickness that's unleashed on the other side of the planet, but this time 10 times worse. Imagine a sickness that's 10 times worse that escapes from a lab and gets out and affects everyone, right? Think population control. There's a lot of people who already think there are too many people on the earth. So that storm that I'm talking about that is definitely coming at some point. When is it coming? Who knows? But that storm could be a civil unrest activity. It could be civil war. God forbid. Nobody wants that. It could be another nation out of the blue. One morning we wake up. And if the televisions are still working, it says there has been an attack. America has been attacked. Now, if you hear that on your television or radio, what are you going to do? What if you get news through your TV or radio or X or whatever app you're using to get the news, and all of a sudden it's a deadly virus with a 60%, 70%, 80% kill rate? What are you going to do? Do you have a 72 hour kit? Do you have food at home? Do you have medical supplies and skills? Or are you going to have to rush out to Walmart and buy a generic health bag, a generic everyday kit that doesn't have what you need? Now, I'm not advertising on this video for anybody. I never have. Nobody's ever asked me. But there's a thing called Jace Medical, J-A-S-E. You can look it up and you can pre-order medicines. Something to think about. We'll talk about later. But any number of things could be the storm. It could be economic, right? It could be the fact that all of a sudden the stock market's doing great and then something out of the blue happens. We do have the highest national debt ever. The interest on the debt alone is the fourth expense fourth largest expenditure that the U.S. currently pays. And next year, it's going to move up and surpass defense spending. So we're going to spend more on interest to service the national debt, which I believe is at $36 trillion at the time of filming this video in 2024. We're going to spend more to service the interest than we are to service the debt. I mean, more to service the Defense Department. That's insane. That's absolute insane. So the storm I feel, I have no idea what it is because nobody can predict it. If you've got an idea, leave me a comment below. You guys and girls are very smart. I would like to hear your thoughts. I feel good about where we are going. I don't feel good overall about what could possibly happen. And even more so, I'm concerned that myself and others are not prepared. So what can we do to get prepared? 
the first and foremost thing you could do and I can do to get ready for whatever storm's headed our way is to get in better shape physically. If you're in better physical shape, if you can walk a mile, if you can ruck with a heavy duty backpack on your back up a hiking trail or through your town, if you can run and play with your kids, if you can do 30 push ups without starting, if you can do 100 crunches, if you can hit some of those metrics, then if there is an emergency and you have to run and you have to carry your child or carry a backpack or pull an older person up out of a ditch or away from a dangerous situation, your muscles are going to be stronger. Your bones, your ligaments, your body, your tendons are going to be better prepared. So getting physically fit, join a gym, start walking, get a friend or partner to do it with you, whatever it takes, and then lead by example. Don't go tell everybody in your family and your friends and your community group to get in shape, but do encourage them and let them see you leading by example. And if you're building a community that's preparing for whatever, who's helping build a better America, who's becoming more self-sufficient, they all need to be healthy as well. Otherwise, how are you going to farm? How are you going to be out in the heat every single day and carrying bags of manure or soil or working with tools? It's going to be hard. Get in shape. I'm talking to myself right here. We need to be in shape. The next thing you can do is gain skills. What kind of skills? Self-sufficiency skills. Can you grow food? Can you chop wood? Can you boil or purify water out of a creek or nearby lake? What kind of skills do we possess? Do you know how to hunt with a gun? Can you hunt with a bow? It's probably not as easy as we think, right? I'm not a big hunter. I'm going to learn this year. But if you're sitting there thinking, if something happens, I'll just go in the woods and shoot an animal. I'm telling you, first off, you better have the right setup. Second of all, it's not easy. And then third, you have to process out that animal. Yes, you have to cut it open. You have to remove the insides and you have to prepare the meat. And then what if there's no electricity? How do you do it then? Do you know how to smoke the meat? Do you know the old school ways of how to preserve it? I don't. I need to learn that. So there's so many skills in first aid, right? We need more nurses and trauma response people who have just been trained. You don't have to do it as a career or a job, but take a look, for example, at my thumb. I was sharpening an ax yesterday and I'm talking to someone and I took my eyes off the stone that I was using to sharpen. And when I did, I just ran my finger across the blade and boom, split the top of it pretty bad. I actually needed more of a band, more than a bandaid. It actually needed some pretty advanced sutures under here. Uh, pull tight little things, not actually stitches. So gaining new skills is going to give you the confidence you need, my friends. That way you will be ready for whatever comes your way and at least physically strong to survive the coming storm that is inevitably going to hit us. Think about the people in the path of the hurricane. They needed to be physically strong to walk out of the hills, to get out of there, or to carry supplies back. Very, very tough. Remember, nobody is coming to save you. Nobody. It is up to you. Okay, the next thing you could possibly do is move. Leave your big city or medium city and move to a more rural town, a smaller town where you can talk to the sheriff, where they have lower crime statistics, and it would be easier to farm, raise animals, and be further away from chaos if, if and when chaos breaks out. Small towns don't have all the stores you need, and they don't have as many restaurants, but you would be amazed at how friendly the people are, how there's still great parks, great services, and the people actually care. Go visit a small town. Just remember, if you go to a small town and you check it out and you like it, remember, don't bring any of the city stuff to that small town. It's our job to go to that town and adapt and not attempt to change that small town, but to adapt and grow into a thriving community like it used to be in America, where people looked out for each other, where your neighbor said, hey, was there a white truck supposed to be down your driveway today? That's the kind of road I live on, if you can call it a road, and that's where you want to be if things go sideways, because ask yourself, do I know my neighbors? I live in a nice community. I live in a gated community, and I don't even know who my neighbors are. That's kind of scary. If things get bad, you don't know who's on the left and right of you, you and you definitely don't know who's across the street. That could get dangerous real quick, which brings me to my next thing. Build a community. You're going to need it. You're going to need like-minded people, be it friends, family, neighbors, or a big entire community. You're going to have to work to say, look, this is what I'm doing. For example, me, 
I'm growing bees, I'm growing animals, I'm getting more livestock, I'm getting prepared to be self-sufficient, I have my own well, I have my own water, how can I help others? How can they maybe assist me? How can we work together and have a like-minded community? Developing a community, I'm always talking about this, even if it's in business. If it's in business, great. The more people you know and that you genuinely care about and respect and communicate with, the more people you can call them for business. But this video is not about business, but the the same applies to preparing for the coming storm. And that is build a community. Start today. Find like-minded people, get them on the same page and get them working out with you, talking to them about survival, the country, the sort of things that you're interested in, farming, raising chickens, selling eggs at the market, honeybees. You want to get started in honeybees? Talk to a local master beekeeper. That's what I did. I got a mentor and I went to a bee club and it's been fantastic and I harvested I harvested my honey. A lot of you guys know I'm a beekeeper. Build that community. That's how we're going to prepare for the coming storm. Now, final question that I'm going to ask you is, who do you think is going to survive the coming storm? Who do you think, what percentage of people and what type of people are going to make it? Really stop right now and think about it. And then ask yourself, am I the kind of person that's going to be able to make it? And hopefully not only survive, but thrive and bring my community and my people through it with me. Are you that kind of person? Are you doing the day-to-day -day things? If you're sitting there and you're eating a donut and you're going shopping and you're wasting time and you're not getting ready, then what you're believing is that everything is going to be perfectly fine forever. And I'm going to tell you, friends, I don't personally believe that. I think we have hit a spot of sunshine, but I believe the storm is coming. And if you and I are not ready, we are going to suffer greatly. And if I'm wrong, if we are wrong and we prepare and we're in shape and we build community, what have we really lost? You gave up some, some of your money and some of your time that you would have spent on entertainment or playing to develop a homestead or garner skills or be out in the woods hunting with your son or daughter, harvesting your own meat or growing bees in your backyard, even if you live in a, a community, check to make sure they allow it, but you can grow them in your backyard in a subdivision. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being self-sufficient. Remember, you were sold a bill of goods. The marketing machine wants you to believe that the matrix, which is what you're living in, the matrix is the marketing machine that makes you think you need to keep going into debt and buying things you don't actually need that you just want. And most likely is to impress other people. That's mostly why people buy things is to impress other people. And then when they can't afford it, they put it on a credit card, then they're in debt and they're forced to do a job they don't like for a long period of time. Don't, that, don't let that be you. When the storm comes, a small amount of people will actually survive. And the reason I know that is because a small amount of people will ever even think about a potential war or potential storm or the next pandemic or the next EM, the first EMP attack in the world that takes the power grid out. What are you going to do? I think back to when a friend of mine had a tree fall in front of his office and he said, he said, can you help me? Can you help me get this tree? And all I had was a little bitty ax. I had a little bitty ax and I went there to help him. And now I have multiple axes. I have a chainsaw. I have a winch on the truck. I have all the tools I need. I am actually prepared. But looking back on how unprepared I was, and I was just using a hatchet to chop that tree down, unbelievably prepared. Now I'm more prepared, but I'm not even close to where I need to be. So who will survive? Those who prepare today. If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Don't be in that category. Be the kind of person that says, hey, all these modern luxuries and conveniences might not be here in the future, so I am going to get my family ready and myself ready. I'm going back to the old school American way of living. It might be hard, but I'm going to make it count. I think you can do it. I think you can prepare for the storm. Let me know what you think. No storm is coming. A big storm is coming. I would like to know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a like if you would. Just hit the like button. It means a lot to me. Have an awesome day.